This sermon is the hardest thing I've ever preached. Because I don't want to preach it. Because it is as much of a confession and a testimony as it is a sermon. The only things that are urging me forward is the fact that I know this is what God wants me to say and the fact that through the testimony part, he will be glorified. I couldn't get a sermon this week. I did everything I normally do. Looked at the Greek, the original writings of the assigned scripture, read all the commentaries. Nothing came. Nothing stuck out. But yesterday I was desperate because I had nothing. And with less than 24 hours to go before I knew I had to preach something, I even resulted to reading 15 other pastors' sermons thinking I'd borrow one of theirs. But nothing stuck out. So all night long, I was angry with God, and I wrestled with him. And by the morning light, he had gotten through to me what he needed to get through to me. And I agreed to preach this sermon. Because you see, it's a confession. I spent three weeks last fall in the throes of coronavirus. Running a fever of 102 to 103 for three weeks messes with your head. So does being isolated with no one, just knowing no one can come to you and you can't go to anyone. I'd read all the statistics that people with coronavirus suffer from the mental effects that it leads to depression. I knew all that, but I didn't do anything. You know, I thought I was above that. Well, maybe not above that, but I could fight it off. But I didn't. I entered a downward spiral into depression. And for the first time in my life, I suffered with anxiety. And I have anxiety now. Trust me. As the months wore on, I started to throw myself into both of my jobs. I wanted to be the best pastor I could be. I wanted to be the best service coordinator for my residents at the villa as I could. Coronavirus had once again given me a wake-up call to how short life was, how much I wanted to live, and how much I wanted to accomplish with the time I had left. And so I threw myself into taking care of everyone else, trying to be the best mother I could be, the best grandma, the best service coordinator, the best pastor. And I focused on everybody but me. My physical health started to suffer. My mental health started to suffer. And my emotional health started to suffer. Until today, I can tell you that I am in a full-blown depression with anxiety. I have started medication, but it'll be a while before I pull out of it. And along the line, I also stopped doing what I needed to do for my spiritual life. I was so focused on doing everything for everybody else that my prayer life dwindled to almost nothing. My devotional life dwindled to almost nothing. And then Christmas hit, and we were busy at church and as families. And then Lent started. Lent's really hard on pastors, because in the same week that you normally have the time to write one sermon for Sunday, you now have to write two, one for Wednesday and one for Sunday. And after several weeks of Lent, that's very daunting. And then we enter Holy Week with added two more services. And by Easter, pastors are exhausted, even the ones who take good care of themselves. And for someone like me who wasn't taking good care of herself, Lent and Easter about wiped me out, literally. I now am on an elimination diet where it's not to lose weight, although it is having that impact, thank God. I got to the point where I could barely eat anything without becoming violently ill. And so I'm now regulated to about literally two handfuls of types of food I can eat for the next eight weeks to heal my body and then start adding food in to see what the triggers are so that I will know what not to eat for the rest of my life. You know, Psalm 23 tells us that he maketh us to lie down in green pastures and he's making me lie down. What that means is if we don't take care of ourselves, God will make sure we do. He will get our attention, and he's got my attention because my spiritual life, my mental life, my emotional life, my physical life are shocked. 
you could look into my car or my house and see what a mess they are, you'd know it was a metaphor for my life. Although, please don't. Don't look into my house or my car right now. I'd be mortified if you saw what condition they're in. I'm reminded of a cartoon that I once saw. It was an older farm couple headed into town in the pickup truck. Him behind the wheel and her over in the passenger seat. And they were passed by a young couple in a convertible with the top down. He's got one hand on, his, on the wheel. And she snuggled up next to him with her head on his chest and, and his arm draped around her shoulder. And as they pass, the farm wife says to her husband, why don't we do that anymore? Why don't we set like that? And he looked at her and he said, well, I don't know. I never moved. Jesus never moves. It's not Jesus that breaks off a relationship with us. It's us who breaks off one with him. And we pay the price. I know that God created this breakdown for me, this dry spell of preaching, which I've never had in 20 years, to get my attention. And he and I wrestled all night last night about whether I would preach this because I don't want to be this vulnerable and I don't want to make this confession. But looking at the gospel lesson for today, I know that it's what needs to be preached for your sake, probably as well as mine. See, in the lesson assigned for today, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branch. The branch gets its life from the vine. The branch can't break off from the vine and produce fruit. It can't even live without the vine. Now, I haven't broken totally away from God. I haven't broken totally away f from the vine. But I'm hanging on by a thread at this point. And I'm feeling the consequences in all areas of my life. So here's what I want you to know. I don't want you to go through what I'm going through. If there is something physically wrong with you, or you think there might be something physically wrong with you, and you've been put off, putting off seeing a doctor, do it this week. If you've been feeling a little depressed, any sign of depression or anxiety, and you've been putting off seeing a doctor for medication, or reaching out to a friend, a pastor, or a therapist to talk about it, do it this week. If you haven't been praying as much as you should, or reading a devotional, or spending time with God as much as he and you would like, do it this week. If you've been working way too hard, and you haven't taken the time to smell the roses, go out on the boat, take a walk through the neighborhood, throw a ball to a puppy, take the grandkids or your kids out for ice cream, do it this week. Whatever it is that you need to do to take care of you, do it this week. There's a reason when you're on an airplane getting ready to take off and the stewardess is going through all of the safety protocol, there's a reason she tells you in case of an emergency when the airbags are deployed to take the mask and put it on you so that you're breathing oxygen before you ever assist anybody else. That's because you cannot help anyone else with something you don't have. I've been running on empty, trying to be the best that I could be for everybody else, trying to live life and not having a big enough picture to know that what I was really doing wasn't life-sustaining or life-giving, it was life-taking. So here's my earnest plea. Make sure you're connected to the vine. It's through Jesus Christ that every area of your life will thrive. And if any area of your life is being impacted by neglect, take care of you and do it this week. Amen.